It's a new year and a new chance for you to make a fresh start with your compliance. For the next 31 days on the FCPA Compliance Report, we're going to be bringing you a daily tip, strategy, or idea that you can use to improve your program. Here's your host, Tom Fox, the Compliance Evangelist. Internal reporting and whistleblowers doing layoffs. In Houston, we have experienced energy companies laying off upwards of 30% of their workforce, both in the U.S. and abroad. Employment separations can be one of the trickiest maneuvers to manage in the spectrum of employment relationships. When an employee is aware layoffs are coming, it can be quite a shock, even when HR shows up at their door and says, please come with me. However, layoffs, massive or otherwise, can present some unique challenges for the compliance practitioner. Employees can use layoffs to claim they retaliated against for a wide variety of complaints, including those for concerns that impact the, your compliance program and your company. There are actions you can take to protect your company as much as possible. Before you begin your actual layoffs, the compliance practitioner should work with your legal department and HR function to make sure your employment separation documents are in compliance with the SEC versus KBR cease and desist order regarding confidentiality agreement language, which purports to prevent employees from bringing potential violations to appropriate law or regulatory enforcement officials. If your company requires employees to be presented with some type of confidentiality agreement to receive company approved several several packages. It must not have language preventing an employee from taking such action. But this is more than having appropriate or even approved language in your confidentiality agreement, as you must counsel those who will be taking the employee, the employee being laid off, not even to hint at retaliation. For if they go to the authorities with a good faith belief of illegal conduct, you could be uh, charged with retaliations. You might even suggest adding the appropriate SEC KBR language to your script so that the person leading the conversation at the layoff can get it right and you have a documented record of what was communicated to the employee being separated. When it comes to interacting with the employees, first thing the company needs to do is treat the employees with as much respect and dignity as is as possible in the situation. While every company says they care, the reality is many simply want terminated employees out the door and off the premises as quickly as possible. At times, this will include an escort off the premises, and the clear message is that we not only do we not trust you, but we do not let the door hit you on the way out. This attitude can go a long way towards starting an employee down the road of filing a claim for retaliation, or in the case of FCPA enforcement, becoming a whistleblower to the SEC and identifying bribery and corruption to the SEC. Treating employees with respect means listening to them and not showing them the door as quickly as possible with an escort. From a compliance perspective, this means some type of conversation to ask the soon-to-be departing employee if they are aware of any compliance violations or violations of your code of conduct or any other conduct which might raise ethical or conflicts of interest concerns. You might even get them to sign some type of document that attests that you are not aware of any such conduct. I recognize this may not protect your company in all instances, but at least it is some evidence that you can use later if the SEC or DOJ comes calling after an ex-employee has blown the whistle on your organization. I would suggest that you work with your HR department to have an understanding of high-risk employees who might be subject to layoffs. While you could consider having an HR con conduct this portion of the exit interview, it might be better if a compliance practitioner was involved. Obviously, a compliance practitioner would be better able to ask detailed questions if some issue arose, but it would also emphasize just how important the issue of FCPA compliance, code of conduct compliance, and simply ethical conduct was and remains to your organization. Finally, our issues around hotlines, whistleblowers, and retaliation claims. The starting point for layoffs should be whether your company plan is going, to, is going forward. The retaliation cases turn on whether the actions taken by your company were in retaliation for hotline or whistleblower reports. This means you need to mine your hotline more closely for those employees who are scheduled 
or in line to be laid off. If there are such persons who have reported an FCPA code of conduct or other ethical violation, you should move to triage and investigate if appropriate the allegation sooner rather than later. This may mean you move up research of an allegation to come to a faster resolution ahead of other claims. It may also mean that you put some additional short-term resources onto your hotline triage and investigations if you know layoffs are coming. The reason for these actions are to allow you to demonstrate that any laid off employee is not separated because of a hotline or whistleblower allegation, but due to your overall layoff scheme. However, it could be that you may need this person to provide you com- your compliance department additional information to be a resource to you going forward, or even a witness that you can reasonably anticipate the government may want to interview. If any of these situations exist, if you do not plan for their eventuality before you lay off the employee, said now ex-employee may not be inclined to cooperate with you going forward. Also, if you do demonstrate that you are sincerely interested in a meritorious hotline complaint, this may keep the person from becoming an SEC whistleblower. So what are today's three key takeaways? Never forget that the employment separation is a critical time if an internal report has been filed. Obviously, treating people with dignity and empathy should be the hallmark of any employee separation, but you may need to take Uh, additional steps uh, to make sure that, uh, first of all, are any employees scheduled to be separated? Uh, uh, Have they filed a complaint, uh, notified anyone? Have they turned in a hotline report or internal reporting? If they have, you may need to uh, get that matter resolved sooner rather than later. Number two, You need to have appropriate language in your separation agreement that if you require confidentiality, nothing in the confidentiality agreement in any way, shape, or form suggests that they cannot go to the government uh, with uh, information regarding violations of law. Uh, This is a black letter law and you need to follow it. And finally, uh, treat terminated employees with dignity and respect. It doesn't cost you anything, and it can go a long way towards protecting the company down the line. This is Tom Fox. I hope you will enjoy this month's offering on hotlines and investigations. 31 days to a more effective compliance program. If I could ask you to do so, would you pass on to at least one person this podcast series on the nuts and bolts of compliance as I'm trying to expand my audience base for 31 days to a more effective compliance program. I hope you'll join me again tomorrow where I take up another topic in innovation and compliance. Thanks again for listening. 31 days to a more effective compliance program is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network.